up YouTube, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be working in Figma and we're going to be trying to create sort of like a set of buttons um, which can be used as components which means they can be used over and over and over again. So this is great if you're making sort of a big document that you're going to be doing lots of iterations on, you know like a website with loads of pages or maybe your company's email designs and stuff and you're just going to put all of your email designs in one document which is a good idea to do by the way. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make buttons and make them sort of super super easy um, and really great for if you ever need to change your style going forwards this is going to be really easy and we're going to use components. So if you don't want to know what any of that means don't worry I'm going to show you. So I'm in Figma at the moment and I've just opened a new document I'm just going to call it whatever uh, auto layout buttons seems to make sense. Then I'm going to press A to um, make a frame. Any size frame will do. Um, and I'm just going to add my color styles first. So I'm going to call this color. And what, what I'd actually like to do is if you press the pages drop down, I'm going to name this page style. And then maybe I would have a second page for like my actual layout. So you would call that website or email or whatever. Um, so in my style page I can have lots of different frames, so this first frame is called colour and I'm just going to set up a couple of colours just to make it easier to work with going forwards and you'll see why. Um, so I'm just going to grab uh, the rectangle tool, I'm going to draw a box any size you like, I just like to keep mine nice and neat, I'm going for 100 by 100. Then I'm going to grab some colours, so I've come to flatuicolors.com which I'll link in the description, um, there's a bunch of nice palettes in here, um, there are a million places to find colours, uh, we'll go into that in the future maybe a video on that. Let me know if you want a video on how to pick colors and stuff like that. So I've just copied the hex code for that. Come back into my Figma and in the fill here I'm just going to paste it and hit enter. Um, and now we don't want to leave it like that. We want to set this up as its own color style. So we hit the four dots here. We don't hit the plus. You might think hit the plus because you want to add this. You would be wrong my friend. If you hit that it adds a gradient over the top or it adds like a second thing so you can have like an image and then like another layer of colour and then another layer and so on and so forth. So you can just delete that. Hit the four dots, colour styles, then you hit plus and I'm just going to call this blue because it is blue and now you'll see it appears here. I'm going to just duplicate this by holding command and D drag it out here, it will snap, hold shift, press right arrow, then I know it's bumped over 10 pixels just because I want it to be nice and neat. Get those in the middle there and I'm going to pick another colour. This which says it's called Robin's Egg Blue but I'm going to say it's more like a mint green. You know? So here, this colour, ah, oh, we can't paste in our colour. That's because it's already assigned to that style. So we can just unlink it here, paste in our new colour, our green colour, hit the four dots, Press the plus, I'm going to call this green, and now I've got two colour styles. I'm also going to make a white, because it's always good to have a white, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, so 6 Fs is white, which we probably all know by now. I'm going to call that white, and I'm going to do another one, and I'm going to make this like a black colour. I never like to do sort of a full black, I think it's just too much personal preference you know comes in here or obviously brand guidelines if you're working with a brand just obviously pop your actual colors in here I'm just gonna go like that that looks fine for the purposes of this tutorial and hit this and press black okay now I've got my color styles there we go easy and if you want to be really really neat then you can add a stroke to that one just so you can see that it is white alright so we've got our color styles set up so you can see here local styles I've got four colors lovely if you ever need to grab the hex codes from those you just hover over them hit the little sliders here and it brings it up here yeah you can also add a description I don't know why you would ever do that okay I'm gonna press A and make a new frame this is gonna be my frame for my buttons if you've never used auto layout in Figma I'm about to just change your life. When I figured out how it worked, I hate Sketch, I hate XD, I hate everything, just Figma is my one at the moment. Um, and I will go into more detail in the future, I'm going to make other videos on how you can use it, it to just completely blow your mind and make your workload really easy. Um, but for today we're just going to do buttons. So the way we used to do buttons as designers is draw out a box and go, oh yeah, I want my button to be maybe 60 pixels high, maybe it should be 200 pixels wide, and then I'll put some button text in here and then I'll get the two of them and I'll line them up and then I'll just change this a bit here and blah blah blah. blah. And then you then you know then you're resizing stuff all the time and you just have a bad time. No more my friends. 
all we need to do is put a text layer. So I'm just going to press T, write some text. That's not right. Text like that. I can't spell to save my life. And what I'm going to do, let's just pick some styles here. I'm going to put it in Helvetica. Let's go with bold, obviously. I'm going to make sure my buttons are 16. I'm going to leave this set to auto, my line height for now. And this is very important now. First step, once you've got some text, don't leave it as a default color like this. Make sure you select one of your styles. You'll see so why later. So let's just do black to start our black. Now, two ways of doing this. You can either press Shift and A, and then that is now auto layout added. This now has auto layout, or I can undo. I can control click or right click, come down, add auto layout. So now you can see there's a, some, sort of like a frame around this. Okay, so if we come over here in our buttons page, we've got one frame. So let's call this button just to start. And if we twirl this down, we can see that there's button text. This little symbol of two rectangles means it's got auto layout applied. So now what I can do is I can come down here and I can add a fill. So let's hit the dots, let's pick our blue color. We've got a button. I mean it looks rubbish, but we've got a button. Okay. So now what I can do, if I come down, I can now see selection colors. So there's two ways of doing this. You can either come in here and I can pick my text and change my text color to white, or when I'm just selected on the whole auto, auto layout frame, I can come all the way down here to selection colors and I can change the white to black, I can change all the blues to green or whatever. So if you've got loads of different colors in a frame, you can just sort of switch them like that. But that will only work if you've set them up as local styles first. Okay. So I actually want my button to be white text with blue background. And then let's style this a little bit. So here in the auto layout section, we don't need to worry for buttons. We don't need to worry about whether it's set to horizontal or vertical. So that doesn't matter. Probably horizontal basically means if you put more than one element inside this frame, it'll stack them horizontally. If you had, if you put it on vertical, they'd go one under another. But because we've only got one thing in here, it doesn't matter. But if you were, for example, going to put an icon in with your button text, you would have it set probably to horizontal. So you've got icon text. So we, we don't worry about that for now. So this is padding on the left and the right. So horizontal padding, right? So let's go. 30 look at that okay and let's go 15 top and bottom now we're starting to look a bit better and then we can put a border radius on maybe let's go five or maybe let's go we can hold shift and press up on our key keyboard and we add 10 at a time so we can maybe just go up something like this so we've got fully rounded corners maybe let's go back to let's go to four i'm going to do minus four okay we've got our first button done right so over here where we called it button I'm going to double click in here and I'm going to do button forward slash primary forward slash blue. Now every time you put a forward slash in a naming convention in Figma, it's going to put it into its own little group type thing, which you'll see in a moment once we've created a couple of these, you'll see why that's important to do that. Um, so just make sure you're using forward slash and you can use whatever naming convention makes sense to you. I'm going to do primary and secondary you could do like main and ghost or you know get funky whatever you want um, so now we need to turn this into component to be able to reuse it so component is basically we turn it into a component and then we can use it anywhere else in our site and if we change the original one all of those other replicas will change right so I can either hold command and press K like this oh that hasn't worked why has that not worked because it's command option K. <laughs> I've done this about a million times, so that's embarrassing. Okay, so now you can see that it's gone purple and it's got this little filled in diamond icon, right? That means it is our master symbol. I can undo that and I could just right click on it and I can go create component. Like it tells you the shortcut there. So there we go, we've got our first component and it's still just exactly the same, it's just text inside an auto layout frame. Now, I can duplicate this move it over here so now this second one doesn't have this filled in diamond shape right showing that it is a child of the parent components so if I change this parent component and maybe change my selection of blue to green it will change here maybe I want to add more padding it changes here I want to change the style of the text it will change everywhere else okay that's why this is amazing okay so that's our first button 
Now this is the important thing and this is where it can go wrong sometimes so pay close attention. If I want to make a blue version of this button and make it reusable oh wait this is supposed to be blue alright if I want to make a green version of this button I'm going to duplicate this blue one and just move it over here I'm going to now call it green instead of blue and it's very important that you don't separate this so you could what I, what I used to do is detach the instance so then it then it's not part of that component anymore and then just sort of do a different one but that means that then if I wanted to make a change globally to all of my buttons I would have to do it on all of the main ones right rather than just once so we're going to set this up so we only have to change things one at a time so I've just duplicated the first one I've renamed it and I'm just going to change the color from blue to green and now I'm going to create this as a component so command option K so now I've got two components right now check this out if I come to my layouts press A and just get like a document here say I've got some text this is this is a header uh, let's just go there we go this is an amazing design for you I can come to assets here and I can either search if I've got loads of assets here we go my buttons have come up or we can have a look what we've got so inside local components we've got buttons and then we've got button primary so let's pop that fella in there there we go and if later down the line we sort of we've set this design up and then our boss or our co-worker or someone says can't really read that button or you know the kind of stuff you get told all the time you can go okay well check this out and you can just come over to the instance now it's green don't like green it was better in blue hmm look how easy that is yeah could do this all day alright so we go back to layers back to style page so we've got sort of our main colors and you can just do that you know how, I don't know how many brown colors you got you could end up having loads I'm now going to take my original one I'm going to duplicate it I'm going to move it down here and I'm going to make this a secondary button oops so I'm just going to type in here secondary and now I'm going to change it rather than being a fill I'm just going to make it a stroke and I'm going to make the text white so here's a problem you might run into so if I think I want to make the text blue right so I'm going to change the white to blue right there we go and now my selection colors I only have one option here so if that happens and you're like ah oh, I can't change anything you can just come in to your button here twirl it down get your button text and then change it here to whatever you want it to be or the way I do it is let's just go back to where I was at the beginning I change something to a completely different color to start so I'm going to change my white I know I want it to eventually be blue but I'm just going to change it to black for now I'm going to change this actually ignore me ignore me ignore me completely let's just duplicate this button again and then rather than having a fill here we can actually detach that fill we can remove it we can add a stroke there we go added a stroke and then we can twirl this down grab our button text make that blue there's like a load of different ways to do this so just sort of figure out what workflow works best for you um, we need to change this because I deleted it we just need to rename this to secondary and then I am going to make this a component command option K done so now I've got a sort of like a ghost version and I'm going to duplicate this one and this is where it's then super easy because the only color I've got is blue and change this to green secondary green so now I just need to set that as a component and now you can see here we've got the diamonds on all of them so we know that they're all reusable components now if I wanted to if I want you know for example all of my buttons to have less padding maybe to have 10 I just change the first one and they all change maybe I want this to be smaller maybe I want it to be bigger like this I mean don't ever design your buttons like that but you get the gist right now you can just change one and they will all change now if we go back to our page our layouts page here so we still just got blue and green here that's so that's related components that's ones that are sitting in that little group that we talked about at the beginning so in this file button we have primary blue and green secondary blue and green so actually maybe we want this to be a secondary 
there it is maybe now you want it to be green and now because it's sitting in that group you can just change it to green maybe you want to go back and you want it to be primary green done how easy is that if you've then got like a billion pages and you want to find your original and you can't find it anywhere you can just hit go to master component and it just takes you exactly to where it is and then you can make your edit there so there you go that is buttons in Figma um, what I like to do is just sort of keep everything super neat um, I don't know why I mean I suppose it's good you know it's good practice to to keep stuff neat I guess I mean we're designers we should be making stuff neat anyway maybe like that and then you know you'd put on on this page you'd also put all your text styles and image styles and stuff like that and then it just helps keep everything nice and clean um, I hope that this was helpful I'll leave links in the description of stuff that might be useful um, you know like color this color page maybe a link to Figma's website maybe a link explaining auto layout further um, I hope everybody is staying safe Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please press the thumbs up button. Please do subscribe. It would massively help me and it would help get this content spread around YouTube a little bit more. And I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Bye.